Okay, so my period is two and a half weeks late for the second cycle in a row. I'm going to be taking my fifth and final pregnancy test. And then, I don't know, I guess I'm making this video because, like, I'm not, like, stressing about it. You know, I'm blessed with a really beautiful baby. Um, but I've been just, like, Googling, which is, like, never good, but, like, secondary infertility and, you know, everyone always tells me, like, it's so easy to get pregnant a second time around, you know, because of my age and my husband's age, like, specifically my age, like, I'm really, you know, we, we pretty much started trying to have a second baby w within, like, th after three months postpartum. Um, so, I just, I don't know. I don't know. What's, what guess what's weird and why I'm making this video is because, like, I Googled so much and, like, nothing really comes up to this or, like, the reasons why. Um... Like my cycle, my cycle in, I guess like May, it was, it was like, it was like, um, it was about six weeks, which I've had my period literally since I was 13 years old. And when I tell you, when I tell you, it's like pretty much on the dot 28 days, like four weeks, maybe, maybe on a, like, like once a year, maybe a few days late or something like that. But it's, it's like on the dot, like it's always been on the dot. Um, and then these last two cycles have been so long. I don't feel particularly stressed. I, I meditate, I, you know, I meditate. I haven't been doing as much or as deep a meditation as I used to. Sorry, the lighting's like horrible in here, but whatever. It's not about that. Um, you know, after my extended cycle in May, I got my period, you know, May 31st and it is like July 13th now and I haven't had my period and I've taken five pregnancy tests and they're all negative and last time I took pregnancy tests, like the first pregnancy test was pregnant. So in like my heart of hearts, like I thought I was pregnant, but I don't feel different. Last time I was tired, like I felt, the body feels different. I don't feel different. Um, so I'm just like confused and like, and also I like want to get my period because if I'm not pregnant, I want to get my period so I can, you know, try again or, you know, whatever. Um, and because I couldn't conceive for eight years prior to, you know, getting pregnant, um, I'm just like, oh, like not, again, not worried, but I think there's a lot of things that I've changed since the six week. well, well, when I had the extended, sorry, this is like all oh, when I had the extended cycle, I was like, you know what? I've been drinking like a lot of teas and coffees and um, sodas. And like when I was pregnant, I drank only water and I felt so good. And like in general, I feel like we should only drink water. So I changed it. I was like, okay, like a few weeks ago, I was like, I'm only going to drink water so my body can feel like prepared for pregnancy. I had seen a comment too, and I don't know if it was meant to be rude or why, but I, I took it as like, maybe I should try that. It's like to get back down to the weight that I was when I was able to conceive the first time. I know weight doesn't have too much. It does. Like, I don't want to say that. Like, I mean, there are medical studies that say like, if you're healthier and like, you know, a healthy weight, like it's, you know, your chances of conceiving are higher. And I know people who have like lost weight here on YouTube that are sharing their journeys, they lost weight and then they were able to get pregnant. So I don't discount that. So I was sick a lot of June. I was very sick. My daughter was sick. I got sick. Um, and I just hadn't been able to like exercise or like prioritize that. So I am doing that now. I am trying to be better like here and there, but definitely just trying to exercise and get my body moving, cutting out sodas, caffeine, any of that stuff. And then the only other big difference is just like, um, I've been online and, and it's all on me. Like you can choose how long you can be, you should be online and what you should look at and stuff. And I feel like this past month, I just was like, chronically online um I found myself like in the morning the first thing doing checking my phone when like in the past first thing I would do is you know meditate and then come down and like be with my daughter um and so that's so even when I have time with my daughter in the morning like you know when we normally would play I'd be like on my phone like you know and, and sometimes you think and I saw I think it was like on Twitter or TikTok um you know sometimes you think well like I think it was a TikTok and the other person's like oh you know you're on your phone with your your infant your toddler they're not gonna remember that and what was so interesting is then it was like yeah they're not gonna remember that but like neither will you you won't have these memories and I was like you know I 
have waited so long for Malibu, like so long for her. And I, I was like, okay, I need to be present. And I think I do a pretty good job of it. You know, I, I work obviously, but I, I do a, a pretty good job of being present when I'm with her, me like no fault when, you know, all that stuff, like when we're together with the exception of like, if I have to edit or something, we're obviously doing this, but I feel like I am very present. Like when it's not work mode, like I'm, I'm present, you know? Um, so all that to say, I think like being online and it's not, it's not like drama or anything, but just like being online, like just seeing other people's lives and, you know, just eat. And it's like I said, it's good. It's like a nice, like, you know, before bed in the morning, like whatever, you know, check it, you have a break, uh, to check it and see what people are up to. Like I, I love social media, I make my career off of it, but it's like, I was so chronically online that I feel like inadvertently and I kind of stress is not the right word, but I feel like I was like, I guess I could feel it. Like I could feel it more, you know, and it would be like, like a very mild equivalent of like panic attacks where I started to feel a little like anxious. I wouldn't be sleeping. I'd be up at 4am and can I go back to sleep? And like, I haven't had that in like so long. And I know it's, it's like, again, all on me, like I'm not putting in the spiritual work. I'm not putting in my physical work of like walking or something like that. I'm being too much on my phone, too much screen time. So I think maybe all that, but I am making this video because I do really value the comments in the community from, you know, um, women who are pregnant, women who struggled a second time to conceive. And I don't want to say that I'm in the secondary infertility category because, you know, it has only been, I mean, we started maybe trying in December of last year, you know, that's what, eight months. And I like looked it up. I was like, like literally Googling like secondary infertility. And I was like, you know, it was weird. It was like, if you're under the age of like 30, they consider you secondary and fertile after a year of trying. I don't know if that goes up or down. I'm assuming it goes like it's, I guess, I guess it's hard, technically, they say harder to conceive. I'm 35 years old. So, um, and it's just like, you know, I would just, I would just like love to have another baby. <laughs> you know, I, um, I love Malibu so much and I loved having siblings growing up and I would just like love to have one more boy or girl and I'm manifesting that I, I feel like I feel like it's gonna happen like I can like see it happening and I know I just like want it now and I'm just like I just want it now so they're close in age and I'm still relatively young and you know oh, it's so annoying like when you go in and they're like considerately call it like I think it's different maybe it's like mature pregnancy but like when I went in <laughs> it was called geriatric pregnancy and I think it's like if you're like 34 because I was 34 and I was like oh my god geriatric pregnancy why do they call it that mature pregnancy is better but um okay so I, a lot of you guys <clears throat> once again this is why like any any sort of idea I've actually never taken an ovulation test so I don't know how those work like are they like pregnancy tests like they look expensive but it's like do you get multiple ones because like Obviously, if you know, if you think you're ovulating, you would, you know, take the steps to get pregnant. But I don't know, maybe I should try that. Or, I mean, we've been trying, like, <laughs> this might be, whatever, it's not human. We're all watching this, we're all mature if you got to this point. But, like, every day. And then the only thing is, is, like, though, like, a few days before when I'm, like, expected to get my period, we have it. And especially now with this past six weeks was so extended two six and a half weeks he extended like two and a half weeks one and a half weeks so I was calling um we we like I was kind of like okay I'm gonna get my period I'm gonna get my period they're like or I thought I was pregnant and I wasn't then I was like okay I'm gonna get my period so we weren't really I guess we should just do it until get the period <laughs> But we've been very actively trying. It's not like we just wait till ovulation day or ovulation week. Like it's very, very actively trying, you know. Um, and maybe we're thinking too much about it. But anyways, the comments suggest that I try a pink dye test because I was taking the clear blue. The clear blue is what I used before and it was very accurate. But I mean, I'm two and a half weeks late at this point. I have a feeling I would love for this to be positive. I would love for it. I've been 
taking tests for two and a half weeks and it's negative and maybe um maybe you know ovulation was off or something I don't know <laughs> I was like like last week I was just like okay I'm supposed to be in my period but like oh, whatever you know like we just were intimate or whatever so I'm like okay maybe my ovulation's off I don't know but uh anyways I really do appreciate support from anyone who's um who has like gone through this or just trying to get pregnant when you're trying to get pregnant and you like really want to and it just doesn't happen it's like so hard and look I like I'm so happy when people share their pregnancy journeys and finding out they're pregnant it's like such a beautiful thing when I found out I was pregnant I was like the happiest day of my life when I was pregnant it was like the happiest moment of my life giving birth was as painful as it was just so wonderful and I think about that day every day I'm like god how great and amazing and exciting that all was and then obviously getting to see your your baby grow and just turn into this like amazing, beautiful, unique human, like every single day surprising you. And it's just, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. It really is. Um, you know, but then when you're trying and you see it, it can be hard. So I always say like, you know, protect yourself, protect your peace, protect your mental health. And um, like I'm at a, like think, thankfully because I did have Malibu, I can watch people get pregnant and it's like, it gives me hope, but before I was able to conceive, I didn't think that I would be able to seeing that happen, like devastated me. So just protect your peace, mute people if you have to, um, you know, because everyone obviously deserves to share their amazing pregnancy and, um, story of parenthood and all that. Like it's beautiful, but also protect your peace. Like if you see stuff, you know, just, you know, mute it or stay offline or something because because it can be hard when you're trying to conceive and you can't like it's literally like so hard and, and it's still hard it's still hard for me even though like I watch people and they oh it gives me hope and I can't wait for that to happen and I love when they bring the second baby home to meet the first baby I think it's like so sweet and I'm just like oh I can't wait for that to happen but um yeah when people announce it I'm just like oh man like ah okay I'm ready I'm ready you know what I mean I, I kind of try and put that up more but I am so thankful for having my first baby and healthy pregnancy and all of that. It was a healthy baby. It was, it was beautiful. So anyways, let's go take this. I'm laughing a lot and, um, let's see how it goes. Okay. So it's not pregnant like I thought. Um, so it's okay. If I've taken like five negative pregnancy tests. So I'm officially done taking pregnancy tests for this cycle. Um, anyways, if anyone is knowledgeable on ovulation, I've read so many different things. I don't really know. Like, I mean, obviously I know about ovulation, but if there's like something I'm missing or we're missing, like, could I be ovulating right now? You know, like those kind of things. I guess I should look into ovulation tests. Um, look, I know it's like, it hasn't even been a year since my last child. So I'm, um not stressing it's you know an age but you know what there's so many women having babies you know 38 39 40 and I think and beyond that so um yeah I think just trying to like eat better exercise cutting out caffeine soda any of that um beyond not being online so much like I love like I said I love to follow people on social media and stuff like that but maybe just not being online so much as far as like reading, obviously posting my job, whatever, but uh, I'm not gonna lie, I'm kind of crushed. Even though like I know, I just like, oh, taking that again, you just always think like, oh, maybe, maybe there's hope. I'm like literally just like here, like hoping that that will turn. <laughs> it's been like 10 minutes and it's not so. <sighs> Man, <laughs> it's so awful to be sad when you have so much to be like thankful for. And you guys help me out a lot in the comments too with this. Like, um, like it's okay to feel sad. Like it doesn't mean you're not grateful for the life you have, but like, I don't know. I know like it's always like what's meant to be will be and you know what's meant for you is going to be yours and like I said I think in my heart of hearts I feel like I will have a second baby um 
regrets. Yeah. Anyways, for all those that are out there currently trying, sending you so much baby dust. For anyone who struggled with like secondary infertility or couldn't get pregnant right away after your first baby, please <laughs> tell me your secret, your magic. You know, people always say like when you're not trying, it happens. And I feel like truly for us when we got pregnant the first time, yes, we got the HSG test before our honey, um, well, it was like our second wedding in Maui and then we went on our honeymoon. But before our second wedding, we got, you know, the HSG test, but it was like New Year's Eve and like, you know, we weren't really thinking it was going to happen like right away and then it did. Um, so I don't know. How do you not, not think about it? Like, I don't know. I really just, I guess that's where the meditation comes in, like clearing your mind, but. Oh. It hurts. It hurts. But, um, if you are currently pregnant and I wish you was healthy and happy delivery. And um, it is such a fun time. And I do follow a few people that are pregnant right now. And I'm so, I like, I truly like get so happy for them and get so excited for them. Um, Cause it's such a, such a fun journey and so magical. The birthing process, that's, that's the thing. If you are pregnant <clears throat> with your first child, um, because if you're pregnant with your second or third, then you already know this. But like, I think so many pregnant women for the first time, including myself, like, like you're so scared of them, like, oh, I gotta, I gotta birth it. <laughs> I gotta birth this baby, like the labor and delivery. And like, I guess going into it, like my pregnancy was like so easy. Like literally I had no symptoms ever um, <clears throat> that I thought, oh, well, like, my delivery's gonna be so easy. Like, you know, people, maybe they're just like being dramatic about it or my labor and delivery, my contractions were painful. <laughs> Once I had epidural, I was like, okay. But even then it was like really hard because I like, get the pushing um, like again, I, I was a little, I, I was out of shape at the time. So I, I, they had to put an oxygen mask on me when I pushed and then we had the C-section and all that stuff like that. And it's, it can be a lot, but it is like, like looking back at that day, the whole thing, like I, I honestly would pay to relive that day. Like it was so exciting. And I think that's like, it's almost, it, to me, it was so surreal out of body. Like it was just, that's how euphoric or heavenly or miraculous it all was like I just it was I was out of body and I was just like you know but there it's a it's a beautiful memory and like I remember being in pain with those contractions screaming actually like I was one of those people I was like wow okay I need to like chill but now I was one of those people like in the lobby like off the elevator check in like on the bed the anesthesiologist was in surgery and I was like I need the epidural I was like screaming um which you guys didn't see because Moses was not filming that although I kind of wish he was kind of wish we were like filming that part because it was so intense but um, but enjoy it. Don't be scared of it. I guess is what I'm saying. Cause like you, you really do forget the pain. And once you're in it, like, it's so weird. Like I, I labored for, um, you know, not long. Like I guess it started at like probably like three in the morning, but like it got intense at like five in the morning. Got to the hospital like eight, nine, probably got my epidural about 10. I was pushing from like one to four, like a long time, like a long time. Um, Ooh, like one to five, two to five, maybe. So anyways, I guess like I basically was laboring till five o'clock, five to five. So like 12 hours of labor. And yeah, like I said, I remember it, but like it just, it, it seemed to go by fast when they're like, you're 10 centimeters dilated, all this stuff. Like everything seemed to go quickly. The C-section went so quickly. Even the pushing, like I really didn't realize it was three hours until I realized it was three hours. And uh, everything just, it just happens and it's beautiful and maybe you won't remember it. And, you know, maybe you're not fully in the moment and I more knows I wasn't because I had the C-section. So I had, um, I had the epidural and I had more, you know, drugs cause you're awake when they take a baby out of you. Um, so, but it's beautiful. Don't be scared of it. I guess that's my whole thing is like, don't be scared of it. Like, like you could have pain. You could not. Some people I, I've watched a couple people too. I watched a girl give birth and she's like, Oh, I literally had, didn't feel anything. And I'm like, you know, that could be, it's, it's always different, but just know that I had like a really, I had a lot of pain and I was one of those screaming people and I still would pay so much money to relive that day. And I think about it, I don't remember every single day I think about it. I think now, especially since I'm, I'm trying to get pregnant, I just think about how beautiful it was, how magical it was, like how the world, like time stood still. The world 
nothing else mattered in the world. And like, that was like a beautiful thing. And I kind of carry that with me now is not that nothing else matters. It does, but it's like my priority things have shifted, right? Like what I focus on now is, is Malibu and it's such a beautiful thing. And if there's one thing, I mean, pregnancy has changed me, being a mom has changed me so much. But if there's one thing that was instant for me, I talk about this a lot, it wasn't necessarily a maternal instinct or anything like that, but instantly I lost all selfishness. <laughs> and I was a pretty selfish person. I, like the world like revolved around me. Like just, that's how I saw things, you know, even if it wasn't like in, in like, anyways, I was very selfish. I was very like, okay, I need to do this. This comes first, this comes first. And like immediately I lost that. Like that was like the one thing that changed completely is just like okay everything is about her when i go get um the barbie blanket i was like okay this is good content but that barbie blanket is for malibu like everything if i whatever i get is for her i think about her and her only and um that's it's a beautiful thing so anyways ah uh, i'm like fondly remembering pregnancy and delivery and stuff because it was just such a beautiful time but this is a beautiful time now so i'm trying to be as present as possible. Her first birthday is coming up, so we're doing a cake smash photo shoot, and I'm gonna have a little party here for her, and it's nice and warm in September, so um, have a little outdoor thing, and see a lot of my friends that just recently had babies that we haven't actually seen each other, so um, I'm, I'm present, I'm so happy, and Malibu is like the most joy-filled, loving, baby girl in the whole world like literally everyone she's like at restaurants she wants to stand now look over at people smile and everyone's just like she's so beautiful she she's so happy her smile her eyes and um she just brings so much joy to everyone and i i mean this from the bottom of my heart like if if it's only meant to be me malibu and moses our lives you know like i know that's meant to be like there's a reason for that and i know if we're meant to have another baby that will happen um, and not to say there's not other steps you can take, obviously, like the whole meant to be thing, you know, obviously whatever's meant to be will be if it's, you know, adoption and IVF and, you know, I watch a lot of people who go through those journeys and those are extremely tough as well. And I, uh, I applaud anyone that goes through that, you know, all for wanting to bring life in the world, to nurture a life in this world. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing. And if you don't want that, that's beautiful too. Like good to know if you don't want that because that's also very responsible and very selfless selfless <laughs> selfless going so um yeah well sending baby dust to everyone out there oh my elbow cramped okay i do have like a little cramp like right here i don't know if that made anything for the past couple days i'm not sure but it's been two cycles in a row two cycles in a row and it's been six and a half weeks since my last cycle so when I say I'm late it's two and a half weeks late any advice is greatly appreciated I love you guys have a great day <laughs>